Hi everybody, this is Flash 001 USA, and this makes the second video that I've done covering the wood gasifier that I built. Now since the first video, I've done some modifications to the unit, and I'm going to place that data along with my findings in this video. What I would like for you to do is to maybe look it over and give it your feedback and some input on what you see in the video. Thanks. Let's get started. As you can see here, the flame is pretty orange, extremely orange, not a bit of blue in it. This is the warm up burn also, but it's a pretty big flame. All right. Let you take a look at the new setup. I've told you I was gonna put dual cooling pipes on it. You can see it stand pretty tall. Definitely helps out cooling the gas now. Looking down at the bottom, you can see that I've got two jars for capturing moisture in. I'm going to get into that a little bit later in the video. Now let's take a look at what I got here. What I'm pointing at is the raw gas going up to the burner. And as you see, solid orange is not a bit of blue in it because there's no filtration on it. And, of course, I've got the filter capped off. It doesn't get any nastier than that. The reason that I added two extra collection jars into the system besides the collection jar on the bottom of the vortex filter is. I wanted to see how much of a difference it would make changing the lengths of the pipe as far as capturing water vapor. And I was quite amazed, I'll tell you right now. Originally when I done the first video, my dual pipes were three feet in length and although I was burning a nice blue flame, I did notice that my filter bucket was literally just getting soaked to the bone with water. I mean, it was puddling up inside of it. And um, I thought to myself, that can't be good on the filter medium. It's probably making it less efficient. So I went from three feet on those dual pipes to five feet in length. And I put a capture jar below that first set. And then I doubled that again and went with another set of pipes, just a mirrored image of those, and put another capture jar there. I wanted to see the difference from one side of the pipes to the other side of the pipes. And the video will be self-explanatory because I was sampling it every 15 minutes to uh, you could actually see how much water was collected. But I'm gonna tell you this right now, adding the extra set of pipes on it made the gas literally ice cold coming out of it. And for everything I read, that's exactly what you want. The colder this gas is, the more compressed, I guess it'll be and the hotter the burn it'll be. So I was just trying to get the efficiency factor up on this. And for the record, that's why I made the statement in the intro video that I was putting all the data up here for everybody to look at because I wanted everybody to look at this and maybe get something useful out of it so that maybe we could build a better mousetrap of this. Let's continue. All right, what we're looking at here now is the first 15 minutes of the burn in. This is the first jar and the second jar. I hope you can see this with a flashlight. They look like they're pretty close. This is, once again, this is the jar that's feeding in to the filter. And this is the jar that's getting its moisture straight out of the vortex in the first set of pipes. They're pretty darn close, but that'll change as the night progresses and you'll see as the video moves along here. Matter of fact, let's take a look here at the vortex filter. It's full of nothing but black goo. All right. Let's take a look at the fuel that I'm running these tests with. It's just small sticks or small branches. In an emergency situation, I could break up enough of this stuff by hand to run a generator for four hours if I had to. There may come a time when wood pellets would not be an option.
hot. We're two and a half hours into the burn. And as you can see, the jar on the left is slammed full just about. Almost looks like it's got different layers of oils and stuff in here collected in it. And as I said at the beginning of the video, this jar petered on out. It's like it's not collecting much water at all compared to this one right here. Let's take a look at the burn tube here. As you listen, you can hear this stuff crackling. I'm going to turn the flashlight off for you here for a second. Let's see the burn. It looks like a Halloween jack-o'-lantern face. Anyhow, as you can see, the solemn burning of this is tiny little sticks. And let's take a look at the flame here. It's a nice blue flame, so the burn appears to be pretty clean at this time. Here's a propane torch experiment that I tried. I've got the oxygen cut off to the intake jets with a piece of tin foil. I'm pointing at it right here. Now, I want you to take a look at something else here. See the flame? If you look at it, you're going to notice that um, at the top of it, it's yellow, but near the bottom of it, it's blue. It's clean burning. Okay, now I'm going to show you something on the burner here on the gasifier. I just loaded it up with some fuel, and at first glance you may think it's dirty, but see it's blue at the bottom and yellow at the top. I think that when you reload it, it has a tendency to burn rich, producing more gas until it stabilizes. Alright, this is pretty interesting. This is near the end of the burn, and this blue flame is so dull that the camera is having a hard time focusing on it. But there is no fuel in the hopper, strictly running off red hot coals. We'll go over here and let you take a look at it. That's all it is, just a bed of hot coals. When it comes to this technology, there's something to it. And yeah, it is worth pursuing. For those of you out there that are looking at playing around with this, be aware that it is messy, extremely messy at times. And for those of you that ever heat with wood or coal or still do, you understand what I'm saying. For me, no big deal. I heated my house for over 25 years with firewood before I moved to where I'm at now. And um, I don't mind cleaning up some ashes, especially if I'm gonna get some electricity out of the deal. With that said, there are two camps to these gasification units. I've talked to people out there that have had nothing but the best of luck when it comes to running a FEMA gasifier. They swear by them. They said they've never had any problems with the motors or the valves or anything gumming up with them. I've talked to some other people out there that are on the opposite side of the fence. They're telling me, hey, look, the FEMA plans were never meant to be something long-term or something that you try to put on a car and drive down the road with that basically, yes, it does work, but here's the deal. They come up with this design so that it could be built with trash cans and hubcaps if you had to. Something as a crisis power source to give you some emergency fuel. And um, I did some research. I did look at some of the stuff that was built back in World War II, and it was pretty elaborate. And as a matter of fact, the modern stuff today follows those plans. Because with the FEMA stuff, it's a straight down tube, and it, you got to work to keep that temperature constant to keep that blue flame. At least I did with mine, but then again, I was running just uh, odd pieces of wood in mine. And you seen from the video, yeah, I did have a good clean blue flame. And um, when it's burning like that, no, I wouldn't be afraid to run it through a generator. But then again, I want to make sure I had this thing right before I run it through any of my generators. With that said, I was looking back at the World War II stuff, and um, as I said, it was pretty much modern like it is by the modern ones today, where they actually have the hopper. And then you have the reduction zone where the heat's produced in it. And then they have air jet holes around it. So basically, it gives the billow effect, just like a blacksmith pumping a billow to melt steel. What is he doing? He's blowing that air into it. And what's happening? It's getting white hot, and it's able to make the metal where it's just pliable. The same thing applies with crack and tar, okay? When they got the reduction zone on this, 
basically where the opening is at the bottom for the fuel or whatever you want to call it's going to be coming out of it, that's predetermined. The size of that is predetermined by the horsepower motor you're going to be running off of it. Okay? Also, the jets have to be the correct sizes because everything has to be matched up. You want that billow effect on this so that you can get that hot area and that reduction zone. What happens as your uh, material is breaking down, you get that hot zone right there and it cracks the tar. That's going to be less tar and less damage that could happen to your equipment hooked up to this. So that's what I'm looking at building right now. Near the end of the video, I'm going to show you the materials I got. Now, with that said, that doesn't mean that the FEMA gasifier can't be made to work. And a lot of people out there have built some elaborate systems to filter, including scrubbers, etc., etc. And I'm going to discuss some of that. I'm fixing to build me one up here, a scrubber system, a pre-filter system before it goes in my filter. I got me one of these. It's a plastic drum and five-gallon pail. And um, I'm not afraid to use it because with my system, I've got my gas ice cold. So I'm not afraid to run it into here. I got this. Got me some fittings. I'm going to make me an intake port on the bottom of this, an output port on the top, and my black bucket will sit on top of this. It'll basically come up as a pipe like this and go into the bottom of mine. And the first thing I'm going to try is filler material here. I'm going to try some stainless steel, uh, heavy-duty steel wool or strips, put them in here, uh, or even some aluminum cans or something like that. Basically, put a lot of surface area in here so that as the tar hits it, it sticks to it. Um, you know, it's like the condenser effect. It'll hit it, and the runoff hopefully will go down to the bottom. And, of course, you can clean the stuff back out and put it back in here and reuse it. That's one idea. I come up with another idea, and that is to take the top of this thing, put an electric motor on it, which I've got a bunch of those, no problem there, a little DC motor. Set up uh, something like you would mag imagine a blender. Something that's going to come down here with some paddles, maybe put about four inches, five inches of water in the bottom of it. Um, have a motor that was spinning up fast that was making this thing into a dishwasher on steroids so that it was basically causing a severe rainstorm in here, just water splattering all over the hell's creation inside of this thing so that as the smoke was coming into it, it had to fight its way through all the water splashing before it come out. That's my second idea to try. I've got another idea that I want to try for filtration because I feel that it holds a lot of promise. I do electronics. I've done it all my life. I've worked in anything from industrial to consumer, and um, it's just a hobby that I've loved to do all my life, and I get paid to do it, and hey, can't have a job any better than that, man. But this is what I'm thinking about building. I'm thinking about building up a high-power electrostatic filter, something that's on steroids, not something like you find that sits on the tabletop of your house that freshes up a room. I'm talking about making something that's semi-industrial, but you know, nothing that's going to be expensive to build. Something simple, straightforward, but something that's got some, some guts to it. Um, maybe something that's about two feet in length, maybe about a foot wide, a half foot tall or something like that, with some good uh, screen plates in it that I can put a high voltage on, high enough voltage so that uh, it'll actually capture a lot of the particulates when they go through it. But the thing about it is, the gas will probably have to be extremely dry when it goes through it, because I feel if there's any kind of humidity that goes through that, it's probably going to short it out. So that's something else that I'm thinking about doing. It's on my back burner. I'm going to share everything that I'm building with everybody out there. This is going to be as open source as I can keep it. Whether it's good, bad, indifferent, or whatever, I'm going to share my information with you. Because maybe I may give somebody else out there an idea, and you go in a direction that I didn't think of. So take this, take it, run with it. Give me feedback from it. Also, if there's somebody else out there that's further along than I am with this, maybe you already had that filtration system. Share it with the rest of us. Because I've looked on YouTube and there's a lot of information out there, but it doesn't really get down to any details. And that's what I hope to offer when I finally get everything completed. And when I do that, I'll have the complete build of everything that I built, measurements and everything, and I'll share it with everybody because I feel that it needs to be open source. All right, everybody, this is going to be part of my future wood gasifier. This is an old oxygen tank that I rescued from the junkyard for about 20 bucks. What I like about it is, check it out, it's already got part of the reduction zone on it. I'll cut it off about here to put the other half of the bell on it. And um, not sure, I think I'm going to put the jets somewhere around here. i got to do some more research on this. A little bit pitted, but it's in excellent shape other than that.
and we'll give you a measurement of it here so you can see the total length of it. It's right at about two feet. I'll zoom in on it so you can see it. There you go. All right, this is going to be a view of it standing up. This way you can see the inner diameter of it. Once again, the reduction zone right down here. I could have been happy finding this, I'll tell you right now. Let's take a look at the top. It's almost nine inches. It's right at eight and three quarters inches. Um, not going to have any problems with this with cloggage with uh, wood if I put wood blocks in it. So that's a good thing. Also, notice it's thick, almost a quarter of an inch thick, right at it. It's uh, most excellent for a burn tube. It's nice and thick, right there where it counts. I got two 55 gallon barrel drums that have lock ring lids on them so they can be taken apart. Um, using these, I'm actually going to be building two of these up. Me and another buddy are building them up, but there you go, everybody. Gather materials. I just realized as I was finishing this video up that we're actually one hour and seven minutes away from the end times. So if you don't see this video, well, only the shadow knows. But if you do, that means we broke on through to the other side. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the main part of the blog, or you can shoot me a personal message. Either way, I will reply back to everybody. This is Flash 001USA. We're signing off, and we'll see you on the other side. Hopefully.